they seem to uh, concentrate more on our separate uh, past, like we have the Odin and Thor, uh, others may have other uh, old gods, because it would make it more, more authentic what happened in, in these areas if they, but you don't think that would be, uh, it's, it's good to think that, that these ideas you just mentioned are 2,500 years old, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we can't even live up to them now, mm -hmm. in, in science and in, in, in the meat and so on, it, it's crazy. But that's how it, it, it looks to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Greek civilization in the classical period was infinitely higher uh, than it is uh, today. It's a decline. And I mean, the, the very fact that the Rexhorn University has suggested, if not totally getting rid of Greek and Latin, but at least again, uh, cutting down and cutting down, it's been like that since 68. Sanskrit studies no more exist on a scientific level. Iranian studies have disappeared on the professor level. No Tibetan studies, no Mongolian studies. These things, these issues I dealt with, totally extinguished. At the same time, you have hundreds of psychologists, hundreds of people, professors of communication, or scores of communication, psychology, what do I know? I know the, all these people. It's totally superfluous. Totally superfluous. It's a burden for society. Yeah. And in the end, they would just be speaking in sound, in sound bites too probably to the students, which can't accept anything else. Anyway, let's get to, uh, to, uh, back to the two last uh, controversial subjects you've mm -hmm. taken up. You seem to just take up controversial yes. subjects. That's true. One is the, Jew the Jewish question, which uh, I've also uh, yes. taken up. Yes. And uh, we're not really being thanked very much for, for doing that. No. Uh, we can't say that. But um, historically and today, uh, it has been a problem. Yes. I, I think we don't need to, to, to use a lot of words on that. Right. Um, but let's say that the Jewish uh, problem uh, uh, was not there anymore. Let's say that all imaginable solutions had been tried, mm -hmm. like even now you say a, a mass killing of all the Jews, which is a, an incredible thing. But also to placate them, to, uh, uh, or, or to obey them really, to be nice to them, to let them come to the, to the front and say, okay, so you are that intelligent, you are that moral, what all you, you say yourselves. Nothing has helped. It's, uh, it's like uh, the problems continue. What can be done, really, if all these solutions have not, have not uh, really solved the problem? Yes, this is a question for which you must be prepared in order to say something that makes a little bit sense. Uh, first, I wanted to define the question. What is the Jewish question today? It's, it's probably not the same answer that would come up on the same definition previously. I would say today it is well established that there is a, a or perhaps Jewish questions, that there is an enormous uh, Jewish influence in the news media and the, in the entertainment industry. That would be Hollywood and then the mass media in the United States. I think there's a common agreement. Check on the internet for the evidence. It's admitted by Jewish researchers also good. And that means one of the main sources of the formation of what we can Called pop, popular, uh, popular, uh, public opinion, a public opinion that is what you do is formed by our news and entertainment media. Good. Now this is generally a very vulgar and superficial world that are presented to us by the mass media and entertainment media. No one will deny that. You ask the man in the street, nobody thinks that these Hollywood productions there are, are much more. Than trash, but it's good entertainment when you come home in the evening, tired from your work. Now, this would really not be a problem if we had a, what shall I say, as we had in the old days, a sort of aristocracy. That is, if the university was still a school for the elites. But the university is now, as the rector himself says, a mass institution. That means if the universities still produced highly qualified people as a school for the elite, then we would not have this enormous influence of the mass media because they could simply be, be discarded. But also if money couldn't buy... Uh, yeah, not like, so like I can only... Yes, I, I, that's too much for me right now to cover yeah. the, <laughs> the financial aspect. But only this one about the public opinion. Uh, Hollywood, mass media and entertainment industry forming the public opinion and then 
the academics are afraid of the public opinion. Yeah. They're afraid of two things. If they step too much forward, then they will be slaughtered in the arena of public opinion. Every academic person, I'm not afraid of front page, of being Cliff Coates on the front page of one of these uh, unworthy so-called newspapers we have, right? But it's not just because they're afraid of the journalist. They can also expect something else. They can expect, because competition is so fierce, to be stabbed in the back of their colleagues and lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. So that, there we really have a problem. Now, it is, of course, there are quite a few Jews of whom you do not hear who do excellent scholarly work and fully agree with what I'm saying. But they are not the ones that the entertainment industry or the news media are interested in. Which is a historical fact, too, that uh, through the ages it has been the, the radical, uh, the, you could say, the hateful... Uh, uh, Sections yeah. of jury which have been behind the power, which have had the, today the yeah. money, um, the scholarship, uh, and so on. It's been very hateful to, to Christianity and to the really to the societies, uh, whether Christian or other societies they lived among. So the problem still exists very much and uh, maybe a hundredfold today from what really uh, was the case a uh, hundred years ago. Uh, like they sit on all the money, they sit on all the media, uh, and you have this serious problem of the freedom of speech, which does not mm. exist in mm. very serious mm. areas, mm. Um, and which means that the whole debate is uh, is is taking place in a, an atmosphere of uh, fear and, uh, right. and 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 suppressed ideas, really. Yeah. Anyway, so if um, if we need a solution, uh, how about the uh, the proposed one of uh, of the Bureau of the Jan one, which you're critical of too. Uh, why is that not a good solution rather than stealing uh, the, uh, the whole of Palestine? <laughs> I, never t I could never take Bureau of the Jan serious. Uh, it, it's a joke from Stalin's uh, side on the one hand. And if, as I, I have uh, mentioned to, to uh, Lady Renouf, if, how do we get the Jews over there? We have, Deport them. They have to be deported because it's free for them to go there. They don't want to go there. Okay, they tried and found out Jewish organizations. This is not the place we want to go. They tried that in the 30s. Okay, so we have to deport them by force. Who would deport them there? Nobody is there to deport them. Mm -hmm. So it's unrealistic for this reason. Even if, if they were deported, if they were deported, what would happen there? Because I understand that there's a huge non Jewish minority over there. Poor people. What's going to happen to those people? It's huh? not an empty country. <laughs> What's going to happen to those people? That would be pretty unfair to them. I, get, I get your point. Uh, I think joke. we are we're running out of time, Dr. Linda. So I'd like to ask you for your last uh, uh, controversial subject, which you're actually uh, oh. heading into right now, which is the if you want to save the Western civilization. Yes. This has been attempted or speculated on before, like by Mr. Rutherford Stoddard, for instance. Yes. It's a very uh, well written book. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, revolt against civilization, mm -hmm. um, which is also the title of our of our uh, seminar. Yes, but uh, he is actually proposing, which has been very uh, politically incorrect since the uh, since uh, the Second World War, eugenic measures. Is that something coming out again now? Do you think in, in, in present day, and how could that at all be be carried through or even suggested today? Yeah, that's a difficult one, uh, but uh, to the extent, uh, well, it, it seems pretty logical that if uh, you threw a conscious uh, eugenic, if you threw conscious genetic, eugenic, eugenic mm. measures, can avoid, can get, can have a child that is intelligent, healthy, and so on, as opposed to one that is not. I mean, then it's perfectly rational not to leave it, uh, to, well, to determine and, and make your choice. So if, in a general way, if you can improve mankind in various regards, intellectually, spiritually, physically, in terms of health, why not? Mm -hmm. So, but that's just, just, just part of the problem. But to the extent it's a rational thing, it's a, it's a good thing. But that is not saying that I approve of it, because it all, must also be implemented, and I certainly don't. 
I don't have. Uh, I don't think the, the political uh, situation is such that we can. Uh, that we can. Uh, that we have the elite. Yes, that we have a responsible political elite to whom we would want to entrust such things. Mm -hmm. So it would be good under certain ideal non-existent conditions. Non -existent that, that is probably conditions. what I would say. Yeah. But at least condition. maybe what, what, what many people agree on, and which you also agree on, I'm sure, is that at least we could stop uh, low IQ immigrants from coming in and dumbing us down to a, an incredibly S low uh, level, S which S is happening, which is uh, what uh, Mr. Tilo Sarasin from Germany has been yeah. writing about, and also Mr. Helmut Nyborg now from Denmark. That's right, yes. And why would anyone want to protest? So there are those who protest. What, let's raise the question, why do they really protest? Mm. No, and the politicians should have the first responsibility to, <laughs> to, to be faithful and, uh, and uh, helpful to their own populist ones. Right. Yeah, what you think. Anyway, that's not the situation. And um, I think we're coming close to the end. But what has been the red threat through all your controversies, would ah. you say, ah. for, for, for the final? Ah, that's a very good question, because I think there is a red thread, and it's important for me, for my own inner balance, that I give a consistent uh, intake, as we would say in Latin, that there's a certain harmony, and I am a very harmonious person, and the thing is simply to keep open, well, to follow the four virtues, to keep an open, alert mind, and also like my old uh, professor of Sanskrit, my good friend, the late Dr. Raja, he was here, and we spoke or sang in Sanskrit together. I remember one of his phrases, it must be intellectually stimulating. That was one of his terms. So all the things I've dealt with were intellectually stimulating. I think that all, <laughs> all your points here have been intellectually stimulating, uh, at least. Maybe prov uh, provoking to some, but yeah, who yeah. cares? Who cares? We want well, they should, care. they should be happy that people want it. Of course, but I mean, we want to have these things brought out and we want freedom of speech. So on that note, uh, I thank you, Dr. Lindner, for participating here, and mm -hmm. uh, we look forward, both, I'm sure, of us, yeah. to, to the seminar. Yes, what, and what I it thank you, Yes, and thank you very much for taking the trouble listening to this dull business here. Well, I had the privilege <laughs> to, 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 to uh, steer it a little bit today, which mm -hmm. I'm happy mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. So thank you, things. and thank you from here, from Denmark, in May 2011.